Danny from Conscious Calisthenics. So this is the second time I'm now making the video because my camera decided to make the mic stop working. So now I'm using the backup camera. And yeah, hopefully it should be all sorted now. So yeah, the topic of today is why do I eat a vegan diet? And the reason why I'm making this video is because a lot of people ask me on a consistent basis on this YouTube channel as to why I choose to eat this way. So yeah, I'm gonna to explain to you fully about my own personal vegan story and what sent me in the direction of eating a vegan diet and the whole process that I've been through since switching to a plant-based vegan diet back in November 2013. So yeah, what I wanted to do was actually start healing my health issues that I had mentally and physically, holistically, such as depression, anxiety, paranoia, ulcerative colitis, hyperhidrosis, so this just goes on and on and on. So in early, 2013, literally on the 1st of January 2013, I embarked on a, a green juice feast where I just consumed an abundance of freshly made cold press green juices that are made in my own home with a masticator juicer, which is one of these slow juices, rather one of these high powered ones that destroy a lot more nutrients. With these slower masticator juices, actually conserves a lot more of the nutrients and you get a lot more juice out of the things that you're juicing as well. And yeah, I embarked on this journey for 15 days and leading up until this point, I had wanted to give up meat because I knew it wasn't the healthiest thing for me to be eating, but I still loved meat. I was a huge meat eater as are most people that eat meat in their diet and I just didn't want to give it up because yeah, for me, my food choices was all about the taste rather than optimizing my health and caring about the animals, which I wasn't aware about the impact it was having on animals by buying meat, for example. And I didn't know about the environmental impact, which I will talk about in a short while, or the negative impact on the environment it has with the animal factory farming industry and then providing us with meat, fish, dairy, eggs, and so forth. So yeah, I got on this 15 day juice feast and I found when I tried coming back to meat, it tasted absolutely disgusting to me. I tried all different types of meat, pork, beef, chicken and so forth and all different types of cuts of meat and it just tasted not good whatsoever. So after trying to eat a few different times after coming off this juice feast, I said to myself, I just cannot eat this. It just doesn't taste appealing to me, so why am I gonna eat it? So yeah, by doing that intense detoxification juice feast that made me feel absolutely amazing, I found that after this time period of then giving up the meat after the juice feast, I then slowly started to want to clean up my diet even more. So I found that it started to just naturally put me off all animal-based foods. I started doing a lot of juicing on a regular basis, incorporated into a diet. I was drinking kombucha on a regular basis and do various other things to detoxify my body and improve my health overall. So from January, no, 2013 should I say, almost made a mistake there. Try to make this in one cut, let's see if we can do that. And yeah, throughout that whole year from that point forward, I just started to incorporate a lot more plant-based whole foods in my diet and started to eliminate more and more of the animal foods. And then I started to learn about raw veganism through certain people that I'd met. So I slowly started to go towards more of a raw vegan diet. And it was more of a high fat, raw, gourmet diet. And for a lot of that year, more throughout the second half of that year in 2013, I was eating mostly vegan food that was raw vegan food. And at the end of the day, I would sometimes eat vegan, sometimes I wouldn't. My girlfriend at the time was controlled and did a meal and it was causing some issues in our relationship that I was going towards veganism and I felt the natural desire to because she said, I'm always going from one extreme to the other. But yeah, there's obviously other issues going on in that relationship. But yeah, enough of that. Let's move on to the next thing that I need to mention. And yeah. 
When I got out of that relationship I was in, in November 2013, that is when I switched to being on a vegan diet the majority of the time. When I say the majority of the time, what I found was at certain points, I was craving certain non-vegan foods, more so cheese and chocolate and other very calorie dense non-vegan foods. But I soon began to learn more about a vegan plant-based diet, how to get it work the best for me and the issue that I was running into was not eating enough calories because when you're eating vegan foods, they're normally a lot less denser in calories. You need to eat a lot larger volume. So I found out I was doing severe calorie restriction, which I've never done in my life. And when you're doing that, it's a recipe for getting intense cravings and binging on all types of foods. And I was binging on all types of crazy things at certain times because of me not eating enough calories. But then I started to get further into this journey, started resolving that issue, and then I started going towards a full fruit-based diet known as the 8-10-10 diet, where it consists of mostly green leafy vegetables, fruit vegetables, and fruits. And yeah, so the main reason for me going towards this diet was because it started to naturally happen over time but also because I wanted to eliminate these health issues within me mentally and physically and holistically and I found switching to this diet began eliminating all of those issues completely and then I also start to learn about the animal ethics side of eating a vegan diet and how you're not paying for foods that are harming animals intentionally and you're not paying for animal factory farm foods and yeah once you start to actually become aware of what is going on with the animal farming industry and for them to provide us with egg meat fish dairy and all these other animal foods and animal byproduct foods and you start to watch certain documentaries such as cowspiracy yeah, if you're a compassionate, empathic being, you'll not want to buy into that anymore. And for me, I am an empath and I was back then as well. So I felt really bad about it. And I was like, I do not want to pay for that whatsoever. And I also forgot to mention as well, alongside the health side of things, I started to watch a lot of plant-based documentaries on how to get the vegan diet to work and how you could thrive on a vegan diet. The main ones I watched was actually Food Matters, Forks Over Knives and many other different ones as well. So I would say to anyone that's interested in vegan diet, make sure you educate yourself on every aspect of the vegan diet and how to get it to work best for you. Because a lot of people that get on a vegan diet doesn't work so well for them, they blame the vegan diet. But for me as a vegan health coach, I've seen so many people make so many mistakes on a vegan diet and I did at certain points, I correct them so that I could thrive on them and I've done that with many of my clients as well. So it's something to be aware of. But then, yeah, back now to all the different reasons that made me go on this diet. So it was the health first, then it made me even more so want to stick to it due to learning about the vegan ethical side, but the animal ethics side of being on a vegan diet and not contributing to the production of meat and other animal foods that I've mentioned. And then the third and last thing that I learned about being on a vegan diet is that it is one of the diets that has the least impact on the environment. Because for example, the animal factory farming industry, the amount of CO2 gas that is produced by them is more than the whole transportation system combined. So yeah, as you can see, that is really not good whatsoever because there's huge issues with pollution. A lot of people say we just need greener cars and it's like, no, you need to stop eating way less meat or none whatsoever and consuming things such as eggs and cheese and all of these other animal foods as well. And also, so much of the rainforest and just natural environments around the world is destroyed due to the animal farming industry and I don't know too much up on this information but I would highly recommend that if this is something you want to look into do your own research up online so yeah as you can see there is many many different reasons that I eat a vegan diet it just makes complete sense to me due to all those reasons and it just 
is in line with my morals and my own ethics as well. And I love myself, I love animals, they are my friends, not food, and I love the environment as well. And I wanna be having the most least impact on all of those different things in a negative way. I wanna be, <laughs> yeah, helping heal the world and saving the animals and healing people as well. So yeah, it works really well for me, it's in line for me, it may not be for other people, but yeah, I would recommend that if you're someone that's interested in a vegan diet, learn as much information as you possibly can from documentaries and people that are thriving on this diet. And what I've also found from my own personal experience, it helps optimize my sports performance, my recovery after training. It's increased my stamina, endurance, my energy levels. It's optimized my cognitive health, my physical health, and it's just made me feel the best that I've ever felt in my whole entire life. So why would I not be doing it? It just feels right to me for all the different reasons that I've mentioned. So I will continue on this path. And yeah, a lot of people are concerned, especially people in the fitness industry and bodybuilding industry, that you cannot get enough protein on a vegan diet. There's a load of misinformation. And I even managed to recently eat over 100 grams of protein with one meal in a down a vegan diet, which I'll put a link for that above in case you're interested in that. I'll show you exactly everything that I'm eating and talk about it in full detail as well. So I recommend if that interests you that you go and check that out. So as long as you're eating enough calories on this diet and you're eating enough protein rich, different plant-based foods in this diet, you can more than easily get the protein you need to give you optimal nitrogen balance, to give you the muscle growth benefits that you're looking to, if that is what you are looking for. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you like the video, like down below, give us a thumbs up. If you don't, give us a thumb down, I don't mind. And please share this video with anyone you think would love to hear about why I eat a vegan diet and a bit about my vegan journey as well. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button down below to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. And if you do subscribe, the type of videos you can expect to get from me on a regular basis, informational videos on one meal a day, veganism, intermittent fasting, calisthenics, calisthenics workout and progression videos, what I eat in a day and what I do in a day videos, and all other different videos to teach you the information to go in the direction of gaining, maintaining the fitness levels, the energy levels and the body to size as well. And I also hope at the same time these videos will inspire you and motivate yourself to push yourself in the direction to gain and maintain those things as well. So if those type of videos sound good to you, make sure you click that subscribe button down below and you click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded and I have new ones coming almost every single day. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic and go and get those gains. Peace.